Dan Schneider has issued a statement in which he defends himself against all allegations made against him. Now, Kyle Sullivan is doing his part to speak out by exposing some sinister things that he witnessed when he was at Nickelodeon. It is necessary to unpack a lot of information here, so let's get started. If you are not subscribed to my channel, then you are only receiving half of what you deserve. If you want to see longer films, deeper dives, and of course, more of me, you should subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It is high time that the entire world is made aware of how terrible Dan Schneider actually was. I am referring to the horrific events that took place behind the scenes at Nickelodeon, which we have been bringing to light. Currently, some of the films that have received the most views are those that expose Dan Schneider. But now that this documentary has been out, his victims have a secure environment in which they may come forward and share their stories. I think Brian got a sense that my dad was on the watch. And so he started to really drive a wedge between my dad and me. It was a different time, so I think it was a little easier to go to and from a courthouse and not worry about. Okay, before we dive into the juicy updates, let's chat about this statement from Dan Schneider. He's like, everything that went down on my shows was totally checked out by a bunch of adults. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, and maybe want to drop some names. He says all the stories, dialogues, costumes, and makeup got the thumbs up from network bigwigs on both coasts. Plus, some groups got to peek at and okay every script, and the top dogs in programming gave the green light to all episodes. But in Dan's whole spiel, there's this glaring hole where he doesn't even touch on the fact that some of the kids on those shows got hurt. And not just oopsies, but real harm, with some baddies even facing the music legally. Are we just going to skip over that part? A statement from Dan Schneider echoing the halls of Nickelodeon, proclaiming all is well in the kingdom. Picture Drake's eyebrow arching, a wry smile perhaps, thinking, well, that's one way to spin it. Remember, this is the same Dan under whose watch Drake had suffered at the hands of another, an individual who didn't just cross the line but sprinted past it, earning himself a not so pleasant stint behind bars. Now, onto the grand stage of Drake and Josh, a show that, contrary to popular belief, wasn't exactly handed down as a grand gesture from the network, a golden key to the city for enduring the unendurable. No, it was more akin to a chess game where Brian Peake, yes, the very man Drake would rather keep in the rear view, fancied himself the benevolent patriarch, the father figure amidst the sitcom's antics. But Drake, with a backbone of steel and a clear sense of boundaries, was having none of it. Over my dead body, he might have thought, adamant that this man should occupy no more of his space than absolutely necessary. The network was blindsided by Brian Peck's behind-the-scenes actions during the buzz of Drake and Josh unveiling. By the time the dust settled and the show was already in the pipeline, the network found itself locked in, leaving no room for backtracking. Fast forward, Drake Bell's legal entanglements a few years back stirred the pot, a saga we've dissected on this channel. Crucially, it's essential to underline that Drake hasn't landed on any sex offender registry, a testament to his acquittal from any charges severe enough to breach Megan's law. Diving into the tumultuous whirlwind of Nikki, Megan, and the stark realities of Megan's law, it's pivotal to set the record straight. Drake Bell is free from the shackles of the offender list. This correction slices through the fog of confusion, a misunderstanding that even I've tripped over. So isn't it refreshing to peel away the layers of misinterpretation and bask in the light of truth? With that said, let's leap into this video, armed with fresh insights on the unfolding Nickelodeon drama. If you're not acquainted with the notorious figure John Wayne Gacy, he is recognized for his horrific and vile deeds, primarily involving the murder of numerous individuals. The documentary titled Quiet on Set reveals the darker aspects of the entertainment empire forged by Don Schneider, a prominent figure at Nickelodeon. It explores serious accusations of abusive behavior and a detrimental work culture within the organization. Drake Bell steps forward as one of the individuals negatively affected by Brian Peck. The documentary, spanning two insightful episodes, features interviews with a range of Nickelodeon celebrities and staff. 
They share their personal experiences and interactions with Brian Peck, including one particularly eerie anecdote that connects back to the serial killer John Wayne Gacy. This link to Gacy, known for his appalling series of crimes in the 1970s, adds a shocking and unexpected element to the narrative, further highlighting the sinister underbelly of the entertainment industry. He was notorious as the killer clown after he brutally attacked, tortured, and injured at least 33 young men and boys. As his stage persona, Pogo the Clown, he entertained crowds at kitty parties and fundraisers. Rest assured, Pogo the Clown is no more. In 1994, he was put to death by lethal injection. Five killer clown facts you probably didn't know, John Wayne's legacy. The bones of several of his victims had fused together after spending so much time in his cellar. It took an entire two years to assemble their whole skeletons. 33 of his victims remain unknown. He too was struck by lightning when he was just 11 years old. He was struck on the head as he was under a swing set. A blood clot was created, but it wasn't discovered until he was 16 years old. For a span of five years, he endured episodes of blackouts that ceased once the blood clot received proper medical attention. His mom's underwear mysteriously vanished, only to be discovered that my little brother John had been swiping them and hiding them beneath our house. It was a period of respite, but when he reached the age of 15, his penchant for pilfering the undergarments of girls in the neighborhood resurfaced. He would slyly snatch them from clothes lines and clandestinely bury them beneath the house. Considering the locations where the majority of his victims were discovered, it's truly unsettling to think that he may not have acted alone. In a 1992 interview, he made a claim that he had an accomplice. One of the people he targeted and who managed to survive played a crucial role in ensuring he was convicted. The victim found themselves trapped in the infamous John Wayne Gacy house, enduring unimaginable horrors. He mentioned that when he was drifting in and out of consciousness, there were moments in John Wayne Gacy's house where it seemed like there was another presence. Wow, that's quite a bit of information about John Wayne Gacy. It's safe to say that he's not finding any peace, but rather enduring a fiery fate down below. Kyle Sullivan, a former cast member of All That, revealed that dialogue coach Brian Peake had an unexpected connection. He was pen pals with a notorious killer clown. It seems that Ryan Peake was intentionally seeking out and engaging in a relationship with this guy. A sneak peek was shared exclusively with People, featuring the former cast members of All That. Kyle Sullivan, who was then 14 years old. I recently had the chance to visit Brian Peake's home, and let me tell you, it was quite an experience. As I stepped inside, I couldn't help but notice a peculiar shrine dedicated to the Planet of the Apes. It was filled with all sorts of memorabilia, showcasing the love and admiration Brian had for the famous sci-fi franchise. However, what caught my attention the most was a painting of a clown holding balloons. It seemed completely unrelated to the rest of the collection, but it added a unique touch to the overall ambiance of the place. He tells me that he initially noticed the clown painting while at a barbecue at Brian Peck's house. It turned out to be a self-portrait of the notorious serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. He painted a self-portrait and then gave it as a gift to this guy. According to a former child star, Brian had a collection of letters and photos sent to him by Pogo the Clown, as quoted by the star. He kept this pile of correspondence from John Wayne Gacy in his nightstand next to his bed. Once more, Brian and John actually became pen pals and developed a close relationship. Despite the awareness of many adults, nothing was done about this matter. Years have passed. Someone else expressed their opinion, stating that they find the situation to be terrible, but they agree with Kyle Sullivan. They believe that Brian Peake and Nickelodeon should be held accountable for this. This content is highly inappropriate for children. They deserve much better than this. I completely agree with the person who wrote this. Upon laying their eyes on the painted portrait and the stack of letters, the parents made the conscious choice to take no action. It's interesting how this industry operates. Dan Schneider, Brian Peake, and the folks at Nickelodeon have formed personal connections with these stars, which is quite unconventional. It lacks a certain level of professionalism. 
Kyle mentioned that a lot of Nickelodeon kids would hang out at Brian Peake's house. He claimed that all the parents adored and trusted him. Kyle remarked, Your natural inclination is to extend the benefit of the doubt to someone you've known for such a long time. The documentary will reveal the cost that numerous former child actors claim they have paid during my extensive hours of work. After spending countless hours in an emotionally manipulative and at times appropriately charged environment, the series director revealed, when we stumbled upon this revelation during the documentary making process, we were absolutely stunned. It made me think a lot about power dynamics both on and off the surface, and the hidden dangers that lurked right in front of us. Nickelodeon has issued a response to Drake Bell's recent revelation about his involvement in a 2004 case. They express their deep concern and sadness upon learning about the difficult experiences he has gone through. We admire and stand behind the courage it takes to come forward. If they dared to utter anything else, they would have faced swift cancellation. Nickelodeon plays a significant role in the issue at hand. Many individuals in the industry have come to Brian Peake's defense. Names like James Marston, Taryn Keelum, Alan Thicke, producer Thomas Danto, Ron Melendez, and many others are prominent prominent figures in the acting industry. Many people are questioning the rationale behind defending such behavior. One of his acquaintances, an actor. James Marsden claimed that Brian's experiences over the past year were equivalent to the anguish of countless individuals. I've witnessed the consequences of the situation and the impact it has had on Brian. I can confidently say that he deeply regrets any errors he may have made. There's a lot more to it than just him regretting the mistakes he made. This guy seemed to be fixated on a criminal's actions, sharing information with children. I find it hard to fathom how someone could publicly endorse someone like that. There's so much we're going to learn from this documentary, and I'll be right here to share some of the most fascinating moments with all of you. Remember to show your support by liking and subscribing to my channel. I genuinely hope you found this video enjoyable, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care, and goodbye for now.